Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Uh, today I'm going to show you some more follow-up work on the sheet metal project I'm doing. I finished one sort of interval here and uh, this is a series of six boxes which I've taken with a shear and then cut with a notcher, bent, painted, and fastened together. And there's going to be a, you know, a group more that attach on both sides. I'll show you a picture here in a second. But um, you know, it, it, it looks simple, and I'll have to admit that it's a little bit more work than, uh, than I certainly thought. But I think I've got it down to a, uh, a rhythm here. So I wanted to take you through the process as well. Also just wanted to show you real quick, here's what the final product is supposed to look like. Um, as you can see, the two, or the section that I completed is right here. So I've got four to go uh, next to it. I am starting with 8 foot sheets of 12 inch wide 050 aluminum that's been powder coat primed on each side. Um, the powder coat priming is really helpful for me because priming in my little uh, workshop here would be not only difficult but pretty a lot uh, very smelly um, or just more time intensive if I were to brush it versus an aerosol. And the powder coat primer is a much stronger uh, coat of paint such that when I bend it on my brake there we're looking at the paint doesn't break off or chip uh, which is which is really important because what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint them this when they're in this shape before I actually bend them because it's much easier to paint a flat surface than it is to paint a sort of three-dimensional box so first thing we're going to do here I've already cut the eight foot strips down into these which are 18 inch uh, by 12 inch sheets and next we're going to just quick so here I've got my diacro uh, 6 inch notcher I've got it tipped backwards here and rested up on a 2 by 4 that's just simply to grab the drops out from underneath it you do need to be a little careful though since uh, thing weighs uh, probably 100 150 pounds and can definitely hurt you in many different ways um, I have spent a little bit of time which I discussed in my former video of uh, truing up these two bracket plates. They're just held down by quarter by 20 volts, so um, the f fixturing itself isn't very precise, so what I had to do was just snug down the bolt, and then I used uh, a dead blow hammer, and I used my calipers to set them to precisely where I wanted, would take a test cut, measure that piece, and make sure it was what I wanted. I got it all screwed up, just push my piece in there, Pull the handle, one corner gone. And there you have it. Before I bought the notcher, I'd considered using a bandsaw and a jig to cut those out, and I can't tell you how much time this notcher saves and, frankly, how much more of a clean cut and a precise cut that it gives. So if you need to cut uh, corners and cut notches out for boxes, there's nothing, uh, nothing better than this. Here's a test uh, uh, segment that I built, and one of the things I wanted to point out was um, there is a little bit of math behind getting the screw alignment correctly because, obviously, the screws in one box correlate with the screw position in the other box, and since this is um, ultimately being done for sort of an aesthetic look, it is important to get those just right. So the thing I've done here is just built a jig, which has all of the hole positions on it. Ignore the smaller holes. Those were uh, a, a bad batch I did. I'm using the larger holes. And then I've just got a sheet of paper here, which is a side profile, which m m notes out to me on which piece I'm doing, which uh, holes I circle out. So, I'll, so this one's going to be what I'm calling box number one, which is the top front box. It has marks in these positions, and in the side wings, this one will only have the left-hand one because this is going to be my right-hand most box, and so it only needs to connect to another box on the left side. So what I do is I'm just using a Sharpie here to um, actually find a center. Oops, actually I marked the wrong, sorry. There we go. And that hole. Remarked. So now I've got my holes marked. I mismarked these, so ignore those. 
um, and by circling it with a sharpie I leave a little dot in the center. For this work, that is precise enough. Um, I realize that tolerance is very by project and um, I've done some experimenting and this is a quicker way or it saves me a lot of time and uh, I don't need to be any more precise than this, which is still probably within, I would guess, 10 thou. So what I'm doing here is just using an automatic center punch, putting it in the center of the dot, and what that does is gives my, um, the dimple in the sheet aluminum here is enough for my punch press, which I'll show you here in a second. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and punch out the uh, five holes I need to on this sheet. The punch press, also a huge time saver, uh, much quicker than drilling the hole, and also drilling tends to leave a bit of a burr or a rough edge, whereas this is nice and clean, as you can see, clean and quick. The center hole dimple that I just marked lines up with a center tit in the punch press die, which allows you to uh, find the right position and then just go ahead and punch it out. So that's my sheet. Um, the next process or next step is actually going to be to paint it. Um, after I paint them, they have to set for about about a week. I'm letting them set. I'm using just a, a home-based latex or acrylic paint. So um, letting that paint sit for a week helps it cure, going beyond just drying to cure before I bend it. Um, and then I'll bend it into a box. So next episode, you'll see uh, the final box.